Hi there, Gary here from Drymatic Heat Drying Australia. Well, I get a few questions all the time about how to charge for the Drymatic equipment. How can I justify my charges? Well, let me tell you a little bit of a story. I've been in the industry, you know, over 25 odd years and I've seen a lot of growth in this industry. I remember back in the 90s when I put a dehumidifier on a job and the assessor would say, hey, you're not charging me for that, are you? And I go, yeah. He goes, nah, mate. So back then, you know, we we're all drying houses. We'd suck the water out of the carpet and pull the underlay out and throw it over the fence or, the, you know, use the clothesline or the outdoor furniture and dry the carpet, put the underlay back, and we're not really drying structure. We had no clue what we were doing. And obviously, the industry's gone further from there, and now we're starting to dry properly. We're drying timber floors and we're drying structure properly, and we're saving a lot more in a property than what we saved before. When before we were only saving carpet. So let's talk to you a little bit about how you can justify it. So whenever I look at having dry matic out there on the field, I wanna know, am I justifying the equipment? So let's example, let's say I've got a wall and it's say four meters long, right? And it's wet up half a meter high and it's chip rock, pine frame and it's, it's wet out and the, the flooring might have nylon carpet and a, and a foam underlay. And it's wet that, uh, about half a metre out from the wall, it's about four metres long, and it's in a 40 square metre room. Now, I've done this in the training events through, when I, when I do training, I've done, I've done this exercise, and I've asked, what sort of, how much equipment do you need to uh, dry that area, and how much does it cost you to buy that equipment? How long does it take you to set up that equipment? How long does it take to dry that area? What is the cost of repair afterwards? So these are all the things you've got to sort of try to justify. So example, if I'm going to just target dry that area, what am I going to do? We've had guys say, you know, they're going to pull the skirting off and put a bucket load of holes in there and pump some air in there and then they put a containment wall up and, and have um, two dehumidifiers and multiple fans and um, all of this equipment to dry that area. And the, the time, the longest time that someone said to me to set that up was two and a half hours of setup to dry that area. So these are all the things that I'm hearing. And it's all we go, oh, why don't insurance companies trust us? Well, because we're all doing it way differently. So at the end of the day, if we could have a, a, a system that was faster. Now, Drymatic is just, it's going great guns here in our country. Um, you know, we are so happy with the success of Drymatic. Over the last five, six years, the Drymatic is just going up and up and up and up and up. There is that much Drymatic equipment out there. There's a lot of insurance people, insurance adjusters, insurance companies are asking for Drymatic to save time on jobs. So this particular job, you know, how would I do it? I would just get a boost, a fan and a mat and I'm carrying it all in one, one trip. I've got the air mover in one, one arm, I've got the boost and the, the mat in, in the other arm, and, and I'm set up in five minutes, and I'm out the door. And I'll come back in a couple of days, and I'm going to be pretty close to being good. So at the end of the day, um, you know, there is a lot of ways to try to justify it. So if you get, what, how would you conventionally dry that? You might need a couple of dehumidifiers and so many fans because it's, it's, a, it's a big 40 square metre room, or you might have to contain it. Um, with a false wall or this or you have to do some invasive drying and you, then you're going to have to do repair afterwards you're going to have to do painting and and replace skirting possibly and all these things so whatever you do you're going to have to justify so you know the boost and mats are so easy to justify against um, other equipment if you just target drying like that if you start to t look at drying a hard to dry structures like timber floor like real difficult timber floor, like an iron bark on, on uh, ply, on particle board. Good luck with any of the other systems. Because heat drying is the, the best for drying timber. That's how we've always dried timber in, in kilns. We heat the timber, we exhaust the wet air. We heat it up, we exhaust the wet air. But it's done with higher relative humidity. It's done with higher grain. So we are drying, predominantly when we do dry timber, we're drying timber at between 80 and 140 GPP. 
So we're really not drying with low grains with timber, we're drying with heat, right? To heat up that the, the, the timber to get that bound water to be released, okay? So we're going through all the different elements, all the different elements of the timber, all, and getting that moisture to, to migrate through the capillaries. So that is the best way of drying timber. And it's been proven for many, many years, not just in this industry, but in all industries that, that, uh, that have timber mills. So at the end of the day, that can be justified. Heat can be justified in hard to dry situations. And how can, how can uh, the dry matic be justified um, versus, say, a dry matic 2 versus dehumidification? Well, you've got to look at it. You've got to look at it and say, well, what do I charge for a dehumidifier? Well, I charge extra a dehumidifier. Let's say I charge, I've got a medium-sized dehumidifier, I charge 100 bucks a day. I'm just going to throw a number out there. All right, let's say I charge 100 bucks a day. Okay, and the now you look at that and how many, you know, if it's a class, let's say if it's a class um, four water damage drying situation or even a class three water damage drying situation, if I look at that and I go, how many dehumidifiers do I need for that section? So if you looked at a class, let, let's say a class three and say 100 cubic metres, you're going to need at least two of those dehumidifiers. Right? So if you looked at something at about 300 cubic metres, you're going to look at about 16 minifiers. That's per the IRCRC guidelines, the S500 standards. So when you, when, you, when you look at that, you go, well, okay, I need this, this much equipment. Yet the Drymatic 2 will do two air exchanges for that size area. So I can get away with one, you know, as long as you do a minimum of two air exchanges with the Drymatic 2, I can get away with one drymatic too. You're going to have some boosts accompanying, accompanying that with fans. Obviously, in a conventional drying situation, you're going to have air movers accompanying those dehumidifiers. So at the end of the day, you can take the place of six of those dehumidifiers. Now, if you're charging 100 bucks a day, can I charge $600 a day for the de for the drymatic? Well, we, our recommend rates are all on the website under the resource center on the drymatic.com.au. But we recommend about $330. And you know, we cap it at the four days. We think that's a fair price. Because it does a lot more than a dehumidifier. But we've got guys, I've heard guys charging $60 a day for dramatic. I just go, what are you guys, nuts? You're charging $30 for an air mover that might cost you three or $400. And then, you, and then you're charging for a $5,000 unit, you're charging double? I don't get it. So at the end of the day, what happens in this industry when it comes down to pricing, it becomes down to, oh, I've got to charge this to get the job. It's just like carpet cleaning if we've, if we've come from a carpet cleaning background. You know, oh, I've got to charge less to get the job. No. When I had my business, you know, we were doing about $1.8 million in carpet cleaning, upholstery cleaning, hardboard cleaning. And our average carpet clean for, for a residential property was $528. And the reason why was that because we offered service we offered high-end quality and we justified our pricing on the from the phone call to doing the job so you have to be you have to be confident in the product and justify what's the alternative if I'm going to be going in there with dry matic and set up dry matic and my bill is going to be X what's my bill going to be with conventional drying and a lot of people say to me they go yeah Gary but now I'm using dry matic and um, I'm taking longer to dry. Really? Okay. Is that because you weren't really doing proper moisture detection before? And now, as well as Drymatic, I actually taught you about moisture detection? Oh, yeah, you got a point. Because you weren't checking frames, you were just checking the gyprop. Now you're checking frames? So before you weren't really drying anyway? Oh, yeah, yeah, you've got a point. Okay. So at the end of the day, um, Drymatic can be justified, certainly can, but you've got to look at the alternatives, match it up. I've had guys do half a house with one system and half a house with another system. And certainly, you know, there's no faster way. You know, we run a course every year up at um, Coach Aid's facility. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we've dried that house very, very quickly. In a four-day period, we've dried that house. You know, we had all, whatever we wanted in that house, power-wise and so forth. So it was fantastic. But, you know, I've... 
I haven't. I'm just not the guy that sells the product. You know, I've used this product for many, many years, going back since 2010. So at the end of the day, I know how much time it can save, and I know the stuff that it can save that other systems can't. So there's your sort of arguments you can help help um, for yourself to, you know, if your loss adjusters come to you, and do you know how you how they some of them gauge you? What they do is they go, how much do you charge per hour? How much do you charge for a dehumidifier, right? And how much do you charge for an air mover? Doesn't matter if my dehumidifier is pulling water or not. That doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if my dehumidifier is efficient. That doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if my air mover is only doing three meters of the wall or eight meters of the wall. That doesn't matter either. And it doesn't matter if my technician has a clue or doesn't have a clue. That's the hourly rate. Oh, but we're getting qualified. We're getting qualified. Doesn't mean he's going to do the job properly. I've got a driver's license. I've had a driver's license since I was 17 years of age. Have I been booked for speeding? <laughs> yes. Doesn't mean I follow the road rules 100%. You know, I cheat. And sometimes, oh, I'm speeding. Or I can do a quick U-turn here. And, you know, at the end of the day, you, you try not to. But at the end of the day, you can't think that, hey, I've, I've got a training qualification. I'm good now. You've got to have a standard behind that. A piece of paper doesn't mean you're going to do the job properly. Education's awesome, but you've got to follow it up and follow that education. So hopefully these little tips have been very helpful for you. I know this video has dragged on a little bit, but there was a bit to talk about, about how you guys can actually help justify that dry matic in your drying situations. Okay? So remember, the dry matic too, can it do stuff that other, other machines can't do? You know, how, what's it equivalent to? The Drymatic boosts and mats. You know, I see people, they charge the Drymatic mat and boost as a price. But what happens if I've got three mats off there? Oh, well, that's the price. Okay, but so one mat, I can get a Drymatic one by half metre mat. You know, I'm going to pay, you know, a couple hundred bucks for it. Or I can buy a three by two for a thousand dollars. You know, what, they get the same money? That doesn't make sense to me. A square meterage rate would make sense to me. So if you have a look at my the, the rates on the drymatic.com.au, they're all about having to justify the equipment over a period of time. We understand that you know you're not going to pay the equipment off in one job. So at the end of the day, you know, you look at air movers, air, air mover rates have ranged in the last 25 years, have ranged from um, you know. $25 to $50, depending on what kind of air mover, over the last 25 odd years. Yeah, dehumidifiers have gone up and down and up and down. And, you know, now they're getting cheaper and cheaper, some of these dehumidifiers, and people think, well, I can make more out of a cheaper dehumidifier. Well, can you? Is it going to last you the distance? You know, why are people buying Mercedes cars? Why are people buying quality, quality vehicles, BMWs, quality vehicles? You know? Why are people buying quality vehicles when they could be buying cheap vehicles? Because they want something to last. So also on the dramatic stuff for yourself, there is the maintenance. It's very, there's very, what can go wrong? I don't know any dry, many dramatic stuff out there that's not going. All of it seems to be going. We, you know, anything that needs to be repaired, it's usually only a board or a screen. It's not, it's not a big deal to get them repaired. Rather than you know, other equipment can be a bit more of a headache. So hopefully that's giving you some tools to get out there and justify the dry manic equipment in your drying jobs. Hope that's helped. Thanks for watching. If you've got any further questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Thanks very much for your time.